It is April. Hold on, I gotta check. April 8th. And is it winter? Is it spring? I don't know, but I do know that it is episode one of season three. Yes, a new season of Virtually Live. Usually we start with some spring birding, but conditions are a little rough. 20 some degrees this morning. And in fact, I need to change hats. That's better. But this is nothing for Northern Minnesota. We don't put our snow shovels away till mid-May. <laughs> And it's nothing compared to winter of 2014, remember that? Yeah, four feet of snow in April, not four inches, four feet of snow. So this is nothing, but what's different is this snow you see around uh, back in the woods, there's a lot of snow still. Um, it's not like the snow melted and now we've got our typical April spring snowstorms. No, it just never went away. Today, we are gonna just see if we can actually find a sign of spring. I don't know if that's possible but we're gonna try and I have a big announcement. So stay tuned, virtually live, uh, let's see, 26, season three, episode one. Bingo, got it. All right, let's go. Ah, frozen, St. Louis River. And surprise, surprise, frozen on the other side of the bridge as well. Maybe you can see right here, one of our Kestrel boxes. Friends of Sac Zimbog has over 50, now 51 boxes ready for occupancy. We hope by Kestrels and not tree swallows or squirrels. Uh, Frank, Clinton and Jason just this week cleaned out all of them. They are ready to go. They are move in ready. Well, thanks guys. That was a lot of work to clean them out. Just had a beautiful male rough-legged hawk sitting on the wire hunting voles. They're one of our vole snatchers. Uh, it was a male, and you can tell by his different markings underneath. Males have a more speckled belly. They don't have that really dark, big, wide belly band of a female. But they might be on their way back. Well, they definitely are on their way back to the tundra now. They come through in November, late October, November. If there's not much snow, they might stay because um, they need to be able to hunt voles. And if there's too much snow, they head out. So this guy might have been in Iowa all winter. Who knows? And now heading back to the, the tundra for nesting. Well, wasn't that cool <laughs> mating kestrels? And they are back to the Saxon bog. Yesterday in Western Carlton County, I had a bunch and 15 rough-legged hawks, by the way. So hopefully that pair we just saw mating, and I apologize, I didn't quite have my camera on the right settings and it was far away, but pretty cool to see that. Hopefully they're gonna use this nest box, one of our nest box right here and uh, it's only just down the road from where the uh, mating action was happening. So let's keep our fingers crossed. Or maybe they have a natural cavity. That's exactly what these boxes are trying to replace is the loss of natural cavities in old trees. And it's, you know, as we know from Eastern Bluebirds, when you build it, they will come. So yeah, let's, we'll, I'm going to remember this spot and we'll check in on them later this summer. All right. Onward. And oh, Northern Harrier. Yeah, my camera wouldn't focus, <laughs> but they are back. They are one of our vole snatchers as well. So it was working these fields and these ditches, uh, just hovering, gliding on those, you know, holding its wings in kind of a dihedral, rocking back and forth, flapping, gliding, looking for voles. Yes, the parking lot's closed because it gets all rutted up in the spring, but the outhouse is always open and the Welcome Center will reopen June 1st through August 31st. So come visit us. 
we'll have naturalists here during the summer season. But, and here's the big butt. Now you're ready for the big butt. We are adding on. We are adding an education space to the Welcome Center. And this will be done this summer. But you know what? We need your help to finish it. Fortunately, one of our members, Richard King, longtime donor member, is putting up a $75,000 match. And this is in memory of his wife, Lois. She was also a, a longtime donor and member to Friends. It will be the Lois King Education Space. And this is uh, a place where a lot of learning is going to go on. Let me tell you, we're going to have programs. Our head naturalist, Clinton, is going to do uh, talks and programs and presentations. We're going to have guest speakers. Uh, when we have our bog bio blitz, we'll be able to set up tables in there. It will be a flexible space where we can have either 50 chairs set up for a program or tables. Um, we'll be able to clear everything out if we have a school classroom joining us. Many, many uses. We're also talking about doing some professional interpretive displays in there as well. So very, very exciting. Thank you to Richard King for this great gift. I'll be putting the details of this match from Richard King in the next e-newsletter and on the website. So yeah, remember, uh, $5 donation gets us $10. And here's another thing, if you're able to do $5,000 or more, uh, we have another batch of Nancy tiles. Yep, Nancy Housel Johnson, the talented ceramic artist up in Fairbanks, Alaska, who did the tiles in the existing building. You can get your little name, your plaque, in memory of, in honor of, whatever you want on one of her tiles. There's 16 left out of 20. So you can see them here below. Or I'll put them in here, right here. Oh, yeah. Magic of video. So, yeah, we are very excited. Construction will be this summer. And, yeah, hopefully by next winter, you'll be able to enjoy the Lois King educational space. Yeah, thank you in advance. Very exciting. And like with this building, it'll be made out of as much local materials as we can with local labor. That's important to us. We're going to continue with the solar power. This time it might be grid tied and we can sell power back to the power company. Wouldn't that be cool? Locally milled Aspen that's heat treated, makes it very rot resistant and very local. The Paneling on the inside will be tamarack again, which is milled locally and makes a beautiful tongue and groove paneling. Canada Jays are busy nesting now, so they're not very apparent. But I want to find a nest. An we are coming up to the creek where I had those hooded mergansers, like 10 of them last spring, last April. But I'm guessing we're a little early. Everything is still kind of frozen. Ah. Frozen. Won't find any ducks here, but there are tracks of what's probably a mink. Kind of cool. Going through the slush. Here's those mink tracks.
lake is still mostly frozen and the geese are anxious. There's a few mallards out there too. Coldest picnic ever. I think we better move on. There's no birds here. The lake is still frozen. This is Stone Lake. But hey, it's a great place to have a picnic when it's warm. <laughs> Bottom line, not many spring birds back yet. American Kestrel, Canada Goose, Northern Harrier, Rough-legged Hawks are migrating through. I will be back. All right, let's move on. Trumpeter swans around somewhere. I know there are. They've been here for weeks. Just had a northern shrike, Stone Lake Road. And they'll stick around till April. I'm just backing up, see if I can see it. Well, I found the Shrike again. Pretty mellow. And while I was watching him, her, I noticed that it has some bands on his legs and that would be from Abby Valine who's doing research on where our winter northern shrikes come from. Do they come from east of Hudson Bay or west of Hudson Bay? And so I'm gonna see if I can extract a frame from the video and show it to you. And there we can see it, yellow band on both legs. I did talk to Abby and she banded this guy on December 29th of last year right along Stone Lake Road, and it's one of the palest birds she's ever banded. Definitely a mature male. No black at all in the outer tail feathers, and it's hung around this spot all winter. In addition to his cute little yellow bands, he has a geolocator on him. So Abby will try and catch it next year and see where this bird has been for the summer. That will be exciting. Pretty cool. It was hunting along the ditch on Stone Lake Road. One of the best roads for Shrike in the bog, period. But yeah, they're returning north now in the next week or two up to northern Canada where they nest just on the edge of the tree line, just below the tundra. Pretty cool. And while watching the Shrike, something else really cool happened. I heard this kick, kick, kick looked around and saw this male northern harrier doing these huge dives, kind of these U-shaped swoops. It was the sky dance courtship flight of the northern harrier. I'd never seen it before. Well, that was a quick spring field trip. Superstar bird of the day, definitely the American kestrels. They're back, a true spring migrant. And looks like they're going to be using our Kestrel boxes. 51 of them out there now, thanks to Clinton and Jason and Frank Nicoletti. Yeah, we got to see them mating. Pretty exciting. Don't see that every day. Yeah, so until next time, and I think I'll wait till there's some more migrants back in a few weeks. Keep your feet in that slush and your head up looking for spring migrants. Um, for me, it's going to be the morning dove. When I hear the song of the morning dove, that's when I shave my beard. So I've been doing that since college. It's a little scruffy and long right now, so I'm ready. All right. Take care. We will see you at the next Virtually Live in a few weeks.